Hi, welcome to this third episode of Scale Up and Don't Screw Up series that we are doing using Flutterflow and Firebase, where we are taking you through a journey of what it takes to build scalable applications, be it mobile, web, using Flutterflow. I am your mentor. I am your host, Kaushik. Uh, so, in this chapter, we are going to be focusing on data flow. how to categorize the data and master the data flow that would be our broad spectrum uh, topic that we are going to discuss about just in case for those of you who are tuning in new we have already covered chapter 1 and chapter 2 uh, the links for those will be available as description below in chapter 1 we spoke about the actual importance of the data flowing across your entire application how it originates where it gets created and how it gets consumed by some other user etc how each user is going to interact with this data how this connectivity across uh, them happens and that is your business logic and how do you go about optimizing or what is the actual importance or significance of maintaining data sanity across these users right the second uh, chapter we spoke about how minute tweaks in our database structure can result in significant cost savings as and when we start scaling our uh, application with Uh, reaching out to more customers or onboarding more users so when more people start using our application the uh, the billing cycles can be quite complicated and we need to be on top of our game if we uh, want to build scalable applications which is going to be consumed by 50000 100000 500000 or a million users we need to really be on top of our game with regards to how this whole database is architectured uh, how it is structured how you store data how you retrieve data and how you deliver this content efficiently to your users in the quickest possible time with the least resources so that your billing can be significantly lower so we did take a look at a minute uh, tweak in the database could result in more than 50% of cost savings uh, or the reach cycle savings on a monthly basis and this is a significant significant uh, co- uh, cost cut down right and the second part of the video uh, of chapter 2 we dedicated it to talking about or discussing about the various pillars that it takes to build scalable applications like what all impacts what are, what is the actual core essence of what a scalable app is now in this chapter as we said we are going to talk about data flow and how we are going to master this data flow right so with that said and done let's flutter flow so the application that we are using for our demo use case uh, for those of you who have watched part 1 and part 2 is the sniff social that is actually available already on the flutterflows uh, app repository when you create a new app so this is something that is available for free with a free version uh, of even a free account of flutterflow so you you will be able to uh, log in and you will be able to get access to this app right so we were working on the home page where the original setup was basically querying for uh the original setup was basically querying uh for a uh, list of user post and then it made one more backend query to get the actual user uh, photo and the name we had changed this from making two queries uh, only the feed section we had changed this to just one query by storing the user image and user name alongside uh, in the same user post collection correct now we saw the query it was reading 50 documents even then correct so the query if you see it was uh, get a, a list of user post and limited to 50 documents so in case there are 50 new documents if there are more than 50 it's going to read 50 so we are still reading 50 documents that means it's 50 reads right what if there was a way that we can optimize this further we can lower down this further with another minute tweak in in the database right so let me show you this so i am going to go ahead and create a brand new collection uh, let me call this user post optimized okay just for the sake of understanding you can name it whatever you want so let me just leave it for now let me just leave it blank and let me go uh, into this uh, section where there is absolutely nothing that is created now it's called the data types so we are going to create our first data type and we are going to call this user post so i am going to yet again create a schema and i am going to say a post uh, basically had a photo which is an image path right and then the fo- post had a title which is a string the post had a description 
which is a string again. And then, of course, the post I had uh, the user who posted it, which is a, a sorry, a document reference of users. Uh, the post we said we are going to store the post uh, user name, correct, which is going to be the string again. We are going to store the post uh, user image, which is the image path. And then we are, of course, going to store the post uh, doc, ref, uh, the document reference of the post itself, just in case. Okay, so we are going to call it the user post. Uh, okay, for now, maybe uh, we'll start with these set of fields. Now we go ahead to our user post optimized, and I'm going to start from scratch, and I am going to call this user post. What you can call it, whatever you want. I'm going to say this is a list of data type of user post. Right. So once I create this schema, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to for now. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've paid much attention to database rules. We will uh, we will work on these database uh, rules a bit later. But I in general tend to uh, keep everything authenticated uh, early on as I build the application and later on towards the end uh, is when I really start planning things out. Right. So uh, let's go ahead and let's say that this is also authenticated, authenticated, perfect. So let's just go ahead and deploy. Okay, as it deploys, we are going to go to the page. We are not going to change the same uh, the page that we already had. So let's just make a duplicate of this once again. Okay, home page copy to. So let's just quickly rename this as home page optimized. Okay, this is what our target is. Now, here what we are going to do is you see we are making a query now. Correct. We are using list of documents. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this query altogether. Okay, and I'm going to go to the top of the page. You can query it uh, anywhere about this list, about this uh, container uh, or the column where we have this post. But I'm going to go ahead to the top of the page and I'm going to add a query where I'm going to query the collection. Currently, since we have just one document, so let's just go ahead and do a single document. And we don't need to filter because it's just one document. Later on, uh, as we move along, I will show you a bit more uh, alterations to the same collection where currently we are just querying for one document. Now, the moment we query for one document, since we that collection or that particular uh, schema that we designed uh, for that user post optimized collection, the document actually contains user post, which is a list of data types of user post, which is holding the, the same data that was there in the user post schema, right? We created a, an identical replica. So this basically means that uh, in Firebase, which allows us to store one MB of data per document, we are able to store not one, but 50 hundreds of posts into one single document. So that means whatever we had or earlier on where one post was just one document and to render 50, we were consuming 50 reads. Now we are able to render this magically just with one document, not 50 anymore, right? So now do you see the potential of its scalability where there you go. So I am able to, instead of going to the back-end query, I am going to go generate dynamic children from that, uh, calling it the variable name as user post. And I am going to point this to this document and say the source is user post, which is the list of data type. No further changes. I click confirm, right? Now it generated the children back again. So I am going to go to this, uh, the image from the user post item. I am binding this to the post user image with cached on. I am going to go, this is should be the user's name. So this comes from user post item once again, data structure field, it comes from post user name. Okay, so uh, since I'm using the same this thing, so I'm going to just copy from this variable and I'm going to go here and say paste and instead of uh, this thing, I'm going to use post photo, correct? Perfect, so this comes from media path, comes from post photo and then uh, what else do we have? Yeah, this is the description, correct? So we go here and we paste this and this comes actually from the description. Perfect. So what about the action that we have right there? 
So the action navigates us to post details, which is taking in the post reference. So again, we go paste and we choose the post doc ref. So we are able to navigate, we are able to achieve that navigation and the user profile again takes in the doc ref of the user, which we also have as post user, right? Perfect. There you go. So back again, we were able to achieve, right? Uh, let me just quickly uh, remove these small uh, parts for now because we did not store it. But if we want, we can add more to the data type and we should be fine. So just for the sake, uh, let's just remove this for now, right? So you saw that how we were able to cut down from 100 reads just to render the feed. It got reduced to 50. So the first structure, if you see here, was two reads, uh, two uh, backend calls for one post. So that's 50 posts. So that makes it 100 reads. We just by adding these two fields to the uh, user post collection, we were able to get a home page which is consuming only 50 reach for this particular section called the feed. And then with another tweak in the database, we were able to optimize it and bring it down to just one. So that's one per user. So imagine if it was 100 per user and you had 100 users, that's 10,000 reach. And if it is one per user, you have just 100 reads. So you have reduced your billing by 100th than what you start actually started with just by thinking through the whole data flow with regards to uh, how do you plan and structure and query your database. So once again, so it brings us to the important uh, termination part of this particular uh, chapter where to summarize, the first thing we have to do is re to really master this data flow, we need to start categorizing this information with regards to which uh, information, how we can bundle this information together as data types, how we can actually create these data types as uh, we create uh, or how do we actually store them in the database in an effective manner so that the retrieval becomes very, very easy where we are optimizing for the read cycle. We are lowering down the number of documents that are being queried to the database. So all this comes along with categorization of data and how we structure it in the database. Second is uh, how do we actually convert and create? So we already discussed that we have maximum access to the contextual information about a particular event when we are actually recording the event, when we are creating the document, when we are editing, updating the document. So we are going to convert the data into different form factors that we need in for future uh, view purposes, just because, uh, just in case that uh, we might need it for some other page. So we need to start anticipating it right from earlier on, looking at the whole uh, the whole design of the application, the whole user interface requirement of the application, the whole business logic of the application and convert it into meaningful form factors so that it's converted right when it is created. That is the most efficient time. That is the cheapest time. That is the low cost op uh, operation that you can do. And you are able to deliver the content a lot more efficiently optimized in low cost manner to your customers. So with that said, thanks for watching this chapter. And in case you do have any requirements, uh, where you seek a consultant, where you need some suggestions with regards to your journey with Flutter Flows app development, do reach out to me on this email uh, right there. So please do like us, subscribe and share the video to as many people as uh, you can. Uh, it will really help us and motivate us uh, to create more content for you. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.